But I want us to think tonight about four things that should be... Uh... Let me just go on, the, on this one. I've probably got a battery or something that's going out. Four things we're going to look at tonight in the first couple of verses that have to do with, with essentials that we could have in the church. Second song should have been happening. Okay. If the battery is the problem, then we're all right. Okay, four things we're going to look at tonight in the first couple of verses that, that are essentials that we should have as part of what we are about here at Living Oaks Baptist Church. And again, I'm not going to take that long tonight because I know we have a, a business meeting that needs to follow, although it's got one issue to be dealt with. You know, we need to reserve time for that. Many of you have been here since 5 o'clock, and I want to honor that as well. But it says that they were con continually devoting themselves to four things. And whenever you continually devote yourself to something, that means that you are establishing that as a priority. Now, some of you uh, probably have things in your life that you are continually devoting yourself to. I know some some here are college football fans, and they are continually devoting themselves to their team throughout all the way through the bowl season, and uh, it's, it's wonderful that both of our college teams made it that far. Uh, some are very devoted to, to uh, kids' sports activities, kids' school activities. I know these kids in band are very devoted to band being there at 6 o'clock in the morning and the demands of that. It's something that preoccupies your thoughts, preoccupies your time, but when it comes to the church, what should we be essentially about? Because church can bring, churches can bring a lot of things as part of what they do as activities. And what should those activities center around? Well, four things you have. Number one, the Word of God. That should be a top priority. It says they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching. Part of what they did when they met was the apostles, and wouldn't it be wonderful to have the apostles here for every service, but they had the apostles, and the apostles under the leadership of God were constantly teaching them what the heart of God wanted that group of people to know. And that needs to be something that we are about as well here at Living Oaks Baptist Church. The second thing is they had an intimacy in the body. It goes on to say, continue devoting yourselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship. That is so very, very important. Yes, we need to be committed, committed to the Word of God. It needs to filter in to everything that we do, to the Sunday school, to the children's programs, to uh, every aspect of what we're doing as a church needs to be somehow built on the foundation of God said this is what He wanted to see done. But it's also very important that we're constantly doing things that uh, draw us together to unify us. And the reason why that's so important is because Satan is constantly trying to do the opposite, trying to cause division. He is always attacking the church and trying to draw it in all different directions. And so we have to recognize that one of the things that God called us to do and to continually do, to be devoted to doing, is to making sure that we're drawing together intimately with one another. Third thing, they also saw us as an essential, and we need to recognize that as well, as an intimacy in our walk with God. When it talks about the breaking of bread, the breaking of bread is that time of coming together, uh, even beyond the fellowship together, but the intimacy of the Lord's table. And one of the most important parts of the Lord's table is that we come together and we get our lives right with God. We do it every once in a while. They did it day to day, it seems like. That they came together and they challenged themselves as to where they were in their walk with God and dealt with issues such as confession, 
of relationships, and God, all those things dealt with before God so that their walk with God could main, be maintained in a consistency and a purity. And the fourth thing you see here is that they put an emphasis on prayer. The Word of God, the fellowship together, the intimacy of our walk with God, and then prayer. Four elements that we need to be about in our church. Now, I want to look on beyond this and give you three things to start with F that, that I would see as visions for us here at the church. And the first is family. Look at verse 44. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. They began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. Number one, we are a family. We come together as a family. And as you read these two verses, you can see that being a family is recognizing that those who walk beside you have needs that are part of your need as well because of your care for them. And that you are not some island in the midst of many islands, but you are all together as a united group. And they recognized that. And whenever a need would come up, you often saw the church responding to those needs. And I know that's part of the testimony of our church here is that whenever a particular need has come up, I have felt no, no problem at all asking the deacons and the stewardship committee, can we go forward and to ask the church to respond to this need with a love offering? And it has always been a very, a very strong love offering that has been shown. And that's an evidence of recognizing that there is a need to respond to, uh, to those who are part of this fellowship as well. And I believe that, that those who are faithful members of this fellowship and we have people who come all the time who are, all, who are going from church to church to church to church and trying to glean as much as they can and get as, as many handouts as they can. Uh, I know some are doing that. Some may have genuine needs. But the first thing I want to know is what church do you belong to? Because that is where that needs to start. And I have not had one yet that has come back and said, well, I belong to so-and-so church that's right around the corner. They're usually not in church. And, of course, that's the first issue that they need, need to begin dealing with. But when it is somebody in the church, I think we begin to apply these verses and do all that we can as a church to minister to their needs. And that's part of what it means to be a family. Beyond that, we need to be a place where families can be ministered to, where we can provide things that minister to all ages. And we are still working on that. We are still trying to draw together programs that will allow us to be effective at all age levels. And as I talked about this morning, it's going to demand some of us to move outside of our comfort zones and get involved in areas we may not have been involved in before, but we see it as a need, an opportunity for our church to step out and to minister to the needs that are presented to us. And so that's part of what it means to be a family. Being a part of a family uh, in your home, you find yourself doing things that you may not be the best at. You know, my mom played a lot of catch with me because my dad wasn't around. Maybe he was better at my mom. was pretty good at playing catch. But she saw that her son needed to play catch, so she got out there and played catch with her son. You know, that wouldn't be the top of what her gifts might have been. But she did it because she saw the need. And part of being in a family is you look at what the needs are around you with other family members, and you respond to those needs. So the first F would be family. And again, you see here something that is reflected in a Greek word called koinonia, which is a very intimate, intimate fellowship that is willing to give out of itself of agape love and to, to touch other lives that have been bonded together with it. Uh, the second thing is faith. You know, Romans 10, 17 says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And that's why I think, think the Word of God is so very important. And verse 46 says, Day by day, continuing, continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. They met day after day after day. You know, we struggle to get people here Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, but they were doing it every day. They were coming together around the apostles' teaching, around prayer, around the essentials that were, were described earlier. And they were a family together, and they were building their faith with one another. You know, last Sunday morning, well, y'all had a wonderful preacher who my mom really liked. I'm not sure all that he said, but my mom liked it. Uh, 
While y'all were here, we did something different. We gathered together as a family and opened up the Bible. And we spent about an hour in the Bible. Our older two were in Hannibal visiting, and they were back there in church. But, but we, uh, with our younger four, we, we opened up the Bible, and we opened up Proverbs 29. And we spent over an hour. We tried to start when you guys did, but we were beyond you in our time. And we spent over an hour going from verse to verse to verse. And you would be amazed at the insights that kids of all ages can have when you center something around the Word of God. And, you know, you get in Proverbs, you obviously got things that identify something that needs to be fixed in somebody's life. So you got, well, still, see, Shiloh, you need to read this. Or, Timmy, are you listening to that? You get a lot of that. But after a while, the Word of God begins to, to sink in and you, you have kids that are really recognizing the principles that are there. And part of building faith is establishing those principles. And we went through that for over an hour. And at the end of it, we invited all, everybody in the family to, uh, to share, you know, what are you really thankful for? What do you see God doing? I mean, what, what would you say about, about what... And it started with Hannah, and she immediately had an answer for that. And going through Timmy and all the way up and around, every one of them had an answer about what they were thankful about God. And, you know, every one of them said... The same thing in a way, they were thankful for family. They were thankful for those God had put in their life that were so important to them. And family, in the biblical sense, is meant to extend beyond who lives at our address. Part of the gift that we've been given as a church is that we become family with, with each other. And that needs to be built on the foundation of applying principles of the Word of God. One of the, one of the verses that we went through as we were going through um, Proverbs 29 was verse 18. And it's one of my favorite verses, but it's, it's, it's one of the verses that is often misinterpreted. Mis, misinterpreted. Uh, I think your voice problems <laughs> coming my way. I don't know. It, uh, it says there, where there is no vision, and you may have the people perish in the New American Standard, the people are unrestrained then it goes on to say, but happy is he who keeps the law. Happy is he who keeps the law, which seems like a strange attachment to the first part of that verse. But if you look in the original Hebrew, it's without a word from God. The people are unrestrained. Without being founded upon God's word, there's no telling which direction the church is going to go. And you can see that in our day-to-day, -day, that when the church has not been established and rooted unashamedly, in God's Word, that it begins to deviate in all different directions, and pretty soon it's not doing anything near what God essentially called the church to be about. And we need to be applying those principles as part of building faith in the body. And to learn to step out, faith is also stepping out, and stepping out into the supernatural, where, where maybe we've never gone before, but the, the Word of God calls us to go out to those... Uh, testing places where we have to have God or we're going to sink for sure. The third F after family and faith is that of freedom. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And when you establish the church in the word of God, then you have verse 47. That they were together praising God. You could see it in the worship atmosphere as people would come together excited about what God is doing in their life and real worship would happen. Worship is not going to be something that Adam is going to have to create, that people are going to come and he's going to have to get us, get us excited. Worship, by the biblical sense, is what should happen when we come in here together after God using us all week long and we come in together and, and experience together an excitement about God that is directed under Adam as he leads us through worship, through song, as we, we open God's Word. We need to have that freedom. Praising God, having favor with all the people, having a testimony that's effective out there in the world because our lives are consistent. And day by day, the Lord was adding to their number those who are being saved. You begin to experience this freedom that comes from building your life on the Word of God where you confess the things in your life that shouldn't be there. You begin to see God uh, bringing and trusting those who he knows he has found a place that they can grow and be nurtured in and the Lord adds to the church. We don't have to, to add to the church. God's business is to build the church. 
We need to be the church that God can entrust those who he wants to bring to faith in himself. And we can be used as a great instrument in that. Day by day, those who are being saved, which tells me that God has a great harvest field out there and that, that Sunday by Sunday, God, if we be the, become the church that we need to be, God can entrust Sunday by Sunday all those that surround us and beyond that need to know Jesus Christ, that need to grow in their faith, and that need to become a part of a family. I'm going to ask if you would to bow your heads and close your eyes. We'll have a quick time of, of decision tonight during our invitation time. And if you have a decision tonight, we invite you to come forward and pray about issues that may be personal to you or issues that may be related to the church. Pray about our business session tonight. Just invite you to bathe Living Oaks Baptist Church and all the various needs and aspects of, of the church life that we come together corporately as a family as a church before God and pray for the various needs that are there. Father, we do praise you. We do thank you for the gift that you've given us of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his life that was lived and, and each day was a, was a sinless 24 hours. And Father, we thank you that he died for each one of us and that because of that, when we place our faith upon him, place our faith upon the cross, that we can be gloriously saved through the power of that sacrifice. And Father, we also thank you tonight that as we look around the sanctuary, and we have more here than would be normally on a, a Sunday night, that we see a, a part of that great family of fellow church members that you've given us. Father, sometimes we take that for granted. But, Father, they're the greatest gift that we have walking around this earth. And I do pray that we would be committed to one another, committed to their needs, not just to being an acquaintance, and that you deepen our fellowship with one another. I also pray that you deepen our fellowship with you, that we might be intimate in, in the most important aspects of our life as we deal with sin as we deal with growing, as we deal with serving you. And Father, teach us to be the praying church that we need to be. For many of us, we've, we've learned about prayer all of our lives. And I know that we have some faithful prayer warriors in this church tonight. And Father, you've told us there's power where two or three are gathered together when the people of God become a praying force and are continually devoted to it. Father, we pray that you'd give us a heart for these things, for your word and for prayer for one another and for a pure walk with you. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, let me invite you to stand. What are we singing tonight? 282, 285. 285. Turn to 285, and as you do, stand, and Adam's going to lead us in our invitation tonight. Again, let me invite you to come forward if you'd like to join us in prayer at the front. Take off the cross and
ask the instruments just to continue to play. And I'm going to ask us tonight just to come together over one issue, and that's the business meeting to follow, and just ask all of us to kind of go to the Lord in prayer as they play through one more stanza. If you have a need tonight, I invite you, encourage you to come forward during this last stanza. But I want every one of us to kind of be praying for God's will, for God's direction, as we make a very important decision tonight. I'm going to ask our ushers if they'd come forward and lead us in prayer. Our gracious Lord, Heavenly Father, we indeed thank you for this wonderful congregation we had tonight and the opportunity we have to visit with Adam and learn about him and we pray that you'll be with us, Lord, in our decision-making, that you'll lead us in the ways that you want us to go, that you'll lead Adam, Lord, in the way that you want him to go. May you be a guiding light in his life. May the church be what you want us to be, Lord. May it work in this community and be the important guiding light that we need. Be with those now, Lord, that aren't here with us tonight but are maybe traveling. Bless those that are here that we're going to share our tithes and offerings with us, Lord, and Again, Lord, thank you so much for the blessings that you give us every day. These things we ask in thy name. Amen. All right, Pat will be back here in just a moment. 